to our opposing event of Black History Month. Before we get going with the program, because we are short on time, I'd like to uh, acknowledge uh, a couple of folks, a couple of individuals uh, that have been part of the planning committee. So without further delay, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Dwayne Murray, uh, Ebony Vincent, Kenise Frank, Oge, Imanagu, uh, Grace Oyan, Christina Henderson, Dr. Annie Daniel, Dr. Carolyn Beverly, Mary Ann Zug, Dr. Lynn Martin, Melissa Wilder, Jason Allen, Dr. Paula Mahoney, Ms. Michelle Taylor Frazier, Yannette Santos, Jasmine Munoz, two students from uh, DMAC. And I also want to thank uh, the MASAC members. There's about 25 or 30 of our DMU uh, students that are part of the Multicultural Affairs Student Advisory Committee have been doing a lot of behind the scenes types of things, helping introduce uh, speakers and getting the word out about uh, these different events. And then a big uh, thank you goes out to our marketing department here at DMU, Nicole Branstead uh, and uh, Jordan, everyone there. It, it takes all of us working together to put these different programs uh, and, and make them successful. Tim Scoble is a person of all different kinds of trades and, and uh, gifts, so we want to thank uh, Tim for taking photos today and his tech support. Last but not least, we want to thank our administration, uh, Dr. Angela Franklin and uh, Provost uh, Karen McClain. And then, of course, we want to thank our entertainment today and our guest speakers to include Mr. James McNair. He's a director of the uh, music program at Roosevelt High School and all the members of Bridges to Harmony Choir. Uh, Ms. Reynolds, a project coordinator for Des Moines' uh, I Have a Dream Foundation and about 10 seventh graders who attend Callanan Middle School are gonna be reading some essays today. And then local musician, Mr. Mikkel uh, Williams. So, an official welcome from our own uh, Dr. Angela Franklin. Please, uh, let's give our uh, president a round of applause. Thank you, Dr. Salas, and welcome to Des Moines University. Um, I'd like to extend uh, Greetings to those who are visiting with us today. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Of course, uh, I'd like to just thank Dr. Salas and his team of individuals who plan a wonderful series of events for our Black History Month uh, celebration. And this is our closing ceremony. We have a lot planned uh, in a short period of time. So without further ado, I'd like to turn things back over to one of our student leaders, Oki is going to be making a few remarks, and then we'll have the program begin. So thank you all for coming, and uh, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Okay, uh, I believe Ogi might still be in class or maybe on her way here, but uh, because of time, we'd like to go ahead and introduce uh, Mr. James McNair in the harmony to Bridges Choir. Let's give them a, a nice warm welcome to Des Moines University. Glad to be here with you today. We're going to do just a few songs for you. This is a uh, Roosevelt uh, High School Gospel Choir, Riches of Harmony. We will sing for you this afternoon. Once we use the microphone, <laughs> we'll sing for you this afternoon. Spiritual medley called "Oh Mary, Oh Martha." Uh, another uh, song which will feature a soloist, Ashton Bell. Let's go down, Moses. We will close uh, our presentation this afternoon 
uh, with My God is a Rock in a Weary Land.
another round of applause for the choir. That was the Bridge to Harmony Gospel Choir of Roosevelt High School. They consist of 37 students. It's an audition group created in 2006 as a result of an overwhelming response to an artist in residence activity with Dr. Iris Stevenson of Crenshaw High School in Los Angeles, California. As a response to the excitement generated by the workshop and concert facilitated by Dr. Stevenson, the Roosevelt principal, Mrs. Kathy Danielson, and director of choral activities at the time, Mr. James McNair, Jr., they created the Bridges to Harmony Ensemble to provide opportunities for all students to become involved in the vocal arts. The ensemble is now in its sixth year of existence and has performed at many community events and traveled to many cities in the Midwestern United States. Bridges to Harmony has also taken part in many community service projects in the Des Moines metropolitan area. These young adults are truly learning how to build bridges of understanding and awareness in their communities, as well as express themselves through the medium of their own unique musical expression. They are conducted by Mr. James McNair Jr., the co-director of vocal music at Des Moines Theodore Roosevelt High School. Um, at this time, I would like to um, acknowledge and um, pay tribute to the Black History Month planning committee members. Uh, first, would like to say a big thank you to Mr. Dwayne Murray. He's here. Mr. Dwayne Murray at the back. Um, I'd like to say thank you to uh, the following members who are part who helped to introduce uh, members and activities for the Black History uh, Month ceremony. Uh, I'll just read through the list. Ebony Vincent, second year CPMS students. Uh, Kimis Frank, Grace Wang, Christina Henderson, Dr. Annie Daniel, Dr. Carolyn Beverly, Mary Ann Zug, Dr. Lynn Martin, Melissa Wilder, Jason Allen. Um, please give a round of applause to these individuals that put in timeless effort to help to introduce uh, the activities for this month. We'd also like to thank Dr. Fowler Mahone and Ms. Michelle Taylor Frazier, community members, um, Yenit Santos, Jasmine Munoz. We'd also like to thank the MESAC members for helping serve food, if you haven't gotten some already. Um, to help introduce speakers, facilitate discussion, and help get the word out about the different events that we've had this month. Um, a special thank you goes out to DMU Marketing Department for creating and designing the different posters you've seen around campus to advertise the event, um, as well as all the digital signage that we've had. I uh, would also like to thank Tim Scoville, he's the photographer in tech support for the event as well as brands from tech services. Uh, finally, I'd like to thank again Mr. James McNair, the Director of Music at Roosevelt High School and the Bridges to Harmony choir members for uh, bringing along the choir on this snowy day. Um, Ms. Reynolds, the Project Coordinator for Des Moines I Have a Dream Foundation, and the 10 seventh graders who attend Kellanen Middle School. Um, also, I'd like to thank the local musician that we have for the events here today, Mr. Mikkel Williams. And last not, but not least, Dr. Rick Salas, who's the, um, who put together the MESA committee to begin with. Because if not for him, we probably wouldn't have had um, a grand event as we've had this past month. So please give a round of applause. My name is Kinise. I'm a first year DPM student. 
And uh, right now, I just want to take the time to introduce a local musician here that's joined us to celebrate this end of Black History Month. Um, Mr. Mikkel Williams um, is going to play about two to three songs. And after Mr. Williams has finished his third song, we're going to go ahead and introduce our speaker for the day, Dr. Paula Mahoney. Right here, over to the right. Okay, um, Mr. Mikkel Williams. I came here from New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina, I guess it's about six or seven years ago. And I was a professional musician, artist, and educator. And that's what I've been doing since I've been in Des Moines. And I love playing for everybody. I love teaching the children. So um, this song here is one we used to do in Bourbon Street in the French Quarters all the time. Play 20 minutes, they said you're gonna play 10. So 
I got to do the short version of everything. This next song is one of my originals. It's entitled Neutral Ground. Now, Neutral Ground in uh, New Orleans is like a, in the middle of the streets, they got enough room on the boulevards to park maybe four cars. And depending on how big the street is, we would have parties in the middle of the street in the neutral ground. So when we would have parades, you would stand in the neutral ground and let the uh, floats go by.
Thank you very much. Sometimes I feel like I'm living just enough for the city myself. Thank you. That was fantastic. This whole program's been great. You guys don't need a keynote speaker. My name's uh, Dr. Paula Mahone. I'm a retired high-risk obstetrician in the community, and I'm so thankful to be here. The music has been fantastic. Wasn't that choir fantastic? They were beautiful to look at and to listen to. And uh, Mr. Raquel Williams, wow, you've always amazed. Did you guys know that music is math and math is music? I believe that Mr. Williams is a genius. Um, he has helped my son with mathematics. You guys are, you've heard from someone today who plays well and is really, really brilliant, intelligent. Um, I want to make the, sure the program moves on so that we can hear from the children today um, before it's time for everybody to get to class. So I'm not going to really say much um, other than I love DMU. I, some of you guys know me. You helped um, at the I'll Make Me a World celebration over the last 10 years. A lot of the students have. And this community is so giving and wonderful. Um, earlier today, Dr. Salas said it takes all of us to make everything work for this program our community, and it truly does take all of us to make things work. This is African American History Week, but I want to remind everyone that African American history is everybody's history. Latino history is everybody's history. We shouldn't be celebrating um, our history just in certain segments of the year. It's a celebration all the time. And in doing that, the children, the students, seventh grade students at Callanan were asked to write about, I have a dream. And we all know Dr. Martin Luther King's speech from the 1960s of I Have a Dream, but we want to hear from them. Um, they are part of the I Have a Dream Foundation, which is a nonprofit group. Um, it's all over the nation, but here in Des Moines uh, particularly, they identify kids that might not otherwise be able to go to college, and they have a pledge with these students to walk alongside them, um, giving them the, the skills that they need to perform well in school, and if the students accept the pledge, they promise to help them with tuition in college um, and whatever they might decide to go on and do after college. And I think that's incredible. It's the way to help break, break the cycle of poverty here. And we have some students here with us. We're going to hear from three students today. But I understand we have um, Nation Chisholm here, Grace White, uh, Cindy Sanchez, and Javon um, Bergs and Antoine Abstin. Can you guys all stand up? I want everybody to see you. We're going to hear from you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. I hope you've been inspired by all the young people that are a little bit older than you guys that you've seen here today. Um, I would like to ask first for um, Grace White to come up and share with us, please. social worker and to help kids that are on the street that don't have homes and that don't have food or clothes. I want to help them have a better life. The person that inspired me is Elder Kim Tindall, my Sunday school teacher. She is going to school and getting a master's degree on something that involves kids. I want to be a social worker because I love little kids and I've seen so many kids on the street that don't have homes. To achieve these goals, I will serve meals at the homeless shelters, talk to adults about ways I can help, and research about homeless kids in my community. I will also work hard in school so I can go to college. I just want kids that are on the streets to have, to have a better life and have water and food and clothes and to go to school. I want, to, I want them to get an education and for them to do what they want in life. That's why I want to be a social worker, to change people's lives. Thank you, Grace. That was really wonderful. Um, Grace is, these, these uh, essays have been already reviewed and awarded, and Grace is our third prize winner. We'll, we'll give out prizes after we are finished today. Our second place winner is Cindy Sanchez. Would you please come forward, Cindy? I have a dream that one day I will start my own organiza organization to help young men and women. I will
would like to do this because it makes me feel happy to help other people. And I will also, and I also really hate to see kids and young adults struggling. This dream came to me by seeing other kids that have no food are getting abused at home. Also, when I see young women expecting a child and have no money for diapers, baby wipes, clothes, or bills, I want to be able to raise enough money to start a daycare for young women who need or want to finish school but can't because of their children. Some, some people may think it's weird, it's a weird dream, but it won't only help me, it will help others as well. I will achieve this dream by getting good grades, going to college, and raising enough money to start, an to start the organization. By keeping my mindset on it, I know it will happen. I have a dream that one day I can say I've started an organization to help young adults. And now we'd like to hear from Javion Burks. Javion is our first place essay winner. My dream is to finish school and be a great dad. I also want to have a great job and a nice big house. I have that dream because I don't want to be in jail or homeless with no way to pay bills. I want to have kids so they can look up to me. I want to finish school so I can have the things I want in life. The reason I don't want to be in jail is because people say, oh, he's not a good person, stay away. To achieve these goals, I will work hard in school. When I graduate from college, I will have a job so I can have fun and pay bills. Another thing I'll do is keep my head up. Someday my dream will come true because I will work hard to achieve my goals to succeed in life. I will stay in school, get my work done, and have a nice, decent job to be the man I want to be. Thank you to all the young people. I think that Dr. King would be, um, or is, if he's watching us, very, very proud to know that we continue to have dreams um, and use the, wor the words that he gave us wisely. I do want to thank um, Carolyn Reynolds and Christy Duesenberry for bringing the young people, working with them. Thank you for all that you're doing in the community. This is wonderful. Um, another thing that I would like to do before we lose too many people, um, as I said, the DMU community is so giving and wonderful, and I'm a part of an organization called Multicultural Education Programs. The bottom line is that we bring um, young people on campus, and you guys are so gracious to spend time talking with them and showing them around. And Dr. Matthew Henry is one of the people that has kept this going. Would you please come, just step up, stand up, let everybody see you. Um, I want to be sure that you that that people know what's going on on the your campus in um, in the community. You give a lot, and people need to understand and be and recognize. And young people, especially, I want you to understand that every stage of your life, you can be giving back um, and, and providing um, a hand up, an encouraging word, no matter where you are. You don't have to have finished your education and be in a job in order to be helpful. But uh, Dr. Henry is a wonderful example. Can you please come forward? Um, for outstanding service in our community to the, for, because of the George Washington Carver Science Academy, we want to thank you. Thank you. So Our third, first, second, and third place winners, please come up. We have something for each of you. Come on up front. We're really proud of you guys. I look forward to finding out what each of you do um, after school, after we finish high school. Why don't you guys come and face our face our group? First place. This is Jamie on. Come on up. <laughs> Javion gets a Des Moines University um, hoodie and a $25 gift certificate. And second place is Cindy Sanchez. She's getting a Des Moines University t-shirt. And I have a $10 gift certificate for you. Okay, yes. And Grace 
Wyatt is our third place winner, and we've also got a Des Moines um, University t-shirt and a gift certificate for her. Will you guys thank these students again? For <laughs> Dr. Mahone said that uh, Black History Month and all the other kinds of celebrations that we're having here at DMU, yes, they are. We're following a national model, and that's why we we have Latino Heritage and uh, Black History Month. And uh, next month we have Women's uh, Month, National Month, and uh, and so on and so forth. But I think it's important that uh, we are as inclusive of, uh, of everyone and, and try to celebrate these gifts and. And more specifically, how they apply to us as healthcare providers. And uh, so, I want to just give a, a big round of applause to all the community people. I know there's some administrators here from some of the schools, uh, and uh, Ms. Reynolds, and everyone else. Just give them a big round of applause for being here. <laughs> and certainly want to recognize and thank uh, Dr. Henry. He's done some uh, oh, yeah. good work in the community for, for many years as uh, so many other students and faculty and staff here. So thank you very much. This concludes our program today. <laughs>